In areas of dry, sandy scrub habitat lives a massive, hairy fly that masquerades itself as a bumblebee for one of the strangest reasons you'll ever hear. Today, we're out exploring one of these scrub areas in search of this strange and venomous insect. Finding one of these bee killer flies can be like finding a needle in a haystack. I have seen very few of these flies in my lifetime, and they look exactly like bumblebees when they're flying around. And they could also be pretty hard to spot. We'll probably end up hearing this fly before we see it because they make these really loud buzzing sounds when they fly around. All right, this isn't what we're looking for, but I have found a pretty cool robber fly in the same family as what we're looking for. This right behind me, right down here, is Proctocanthus brevipennis, which is a species of robber fly that's pretty common out here in these scrub areas, but it's a very large species, impressive in size. While this species is really cool, it's not what we're out here looking for, which is a species of robber fly that is, in my opinion, even cooler. So let's keep looking. After a lot more searching for movement through the dense shrubs covering the sandy ground, I finally noticed one of these huge bee-mimicking flies. I have just spotted a beautiful southern bee killer, a species that I haven't seen very often. This is only the second time I've ever found a southern bee killer, and it is just sitting right in front of me perfectly still. All right, children, what I just netted up right here is one of the strangest flies in the entire world, and one that doesn't even look like a fly unless you look really close. This is a southern bee killer, one of the larger members of the robber fly family. Robber flies are a family of flies that are extremely voracious predators. Unusually for flies, they have huge, very well-seeing eyes, long, bulky, muscular legs, and a long, sharp proboscis that they use to inject their insect prey that they catch with a neurotoxic venom and digestive enzymes to destabilize the prey item and liquefy the insides so that way they could suck out the insides of the prey through that same proboscis. Most robber flies have what is called a mystax, which is a cluster of hairs right in front of the proboscis that protects both the eyes and the base of the mouth, which are two very vulnerable spots when a robber fly is eating food. And this species right here, the southern bee killer, has an especially prominent mystax because what it eats are bees and wasps, two prey items that could easily fight back using their venomous sting. So this fly protects its face with a very unusually bushy mystax. You might be able to see that that mystax is not the only bushy part of this robber fly. Now many robber flies are covered in sensitive hairs, but bee killers, like this southern bee killer right here, have very dense hairs all across the body, giving them a fluffy, almost cute teddy bear-like appearance. But this has a very important purpose. You see, bee killers not only eat bees, they also mimic them. And the southern bee killer is a perfect mimic of bumblebees in size, overall appearance, color pattern, and that very fluffy look. But there's a couple things that give this away as a robber fly. First, it has two wings. Bees would have four wings. The reason all flies, including robber flies, have two wings is because their back two wings have evolved into a structure called a halter, which is a very small knob that they use to control the direction of their flight, almost like a rudder on an airplane. Second, just look at that face. That very distinctive robber fly face with those two huge eyes that cover most of the head. The thin little antennae, the bushy mystax, and that proboscis. Now you might not be able to see the proboscis at first because it is hidden pretty well underneath that mystax, but if you look really closely at the face, you can see a little bit of that proboscis sticking out from underneath the bottom of the mystax. Now you might be wondering, why would this robber fly be wanting to mimic a bee? Well, many robber flies, in fact, mimic bees and wasps to protect themselves from predators. You see, a predator is much more likely to eat a fly that has basically no defense than it is to eat a bee which can sting. But that's not the reason that bee killers mimic bees. In fact, they actually mimic bees so that way they can get closer to bees and eat them. A honeybee or a wasp would not mind if a big carpenter bee or a big bumblebee were to come to share its flower with it because it's not really going to do anything to harm the bee or the wasp. So this bee killer, looking like a big carpenter bee or a bumblebee, can just easily sneak up on a smaller bee like a honeybee or a smaller sized wasp without it knowing thinking that it's just sharing its space with another bigger bee, and then just out of nowhere will attack it, catch it with those long muscular legs in midair, and immediately inject it with a dose of that 
neurotoxic venom. Now, while the bite of a robber fly can be quite painful, there are two reasons why you should still not be afraid of robber flies. One, the neurotoxic venom is specifically for catching insects. The venom is harmless to humans and causes only a little bit of local pain and itchiness. And second, their bite is only for offense. They only bite to eat insects. The only time a robber fly will bite you is if you're holding it like this, <laughs> which I don't suggest doing. Now the reason I can tell that this is a southern bee killer and not one of the other two species of bee killers that we have here in Florida, the Florida bee killer and the black bee killer, is that immediately you could tell it isn't a black bee killer because it has a lot of yellow on the abdomen. But you could tell that this isn't a Florida bee killer because the Florida bee killer would have extra yellow on the bottom of the abdomen and at the tip of the abdomen. You see, the bottom of the abdomen and the tip of the abdomen of the southern bee killer is all black and there's only a little yellow patch at the top of the base of the abdomen. On average, from what I could tell, Florida bee killers are larger than southern bee killers and are a little bit paler in coloration. The yellow on the southern bee killer is usually a bit more of a golden yellow, whereas the yellow on the Florida bee killer is a bit more of an off-white or a very pale yellow. You can see this beautiful robber fly right here is not even trying to bite. You can see all it wants to do is go away, go back to hunting bees out in this beautiful Florida scrub environment. Hope you enjoyed learning all about the southern bee killer with me. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this video right here, where we find a bunch of tiny little robber flies that you could probably find at the beach. Enjoy!